This is an appetizer for the soul. My name is Reverend Dr. Deborah Whitlock Lax, and today's topic is the divine tether. You know, I used to play tether ball as a kid, and it was so much fun because we just never had to race after a ball. Recently, I had a different kind of tether, and that tether was to a life giving, life sustaining IV pole. It had and sodium chloride dripping out of it into my veins, my veins in which I said, shove a needle in it and get me better. Now, in all transparency, you know, I put myself there. I wasn't eating right. I wasn't uh, treating my body well. I wasn't doing self-care. And so here I was at risk of not so good future. And I had to really, you know, come to grips with what in the world, Lord, what is it that you're teaching me in all of this? Because I was really, quite frankly, frustrated of having to drag this IV pole back and forth to the bathroom, to my bed, back and forth, back and forth. And so I I looked at it and I had to stop and had to realize, huh, this is life-giving substance. Isn't that what God gives us? He, you know, when we present present ourselves. Just like I had to present my arm for a nurse to stick it with a needle, we have to present ourselves to God and allow him to provide his life-giving presence in our soul. He takes away our sin and he gives us life. You know, and a second thing that I, I learned was in our bodies, we have an autonomic nervous system and we have a sympathetic nervous system. And when the body is in danger or stress, that it, the sympathetic nervous system takes over and releases all kinds of stressor, stress hormones and causes your blood to constrict and glucose to fall out into your bloodstream to give you a little bit more energy. And you know what? And if you're constantly stressed, if you're constantly pushing the edge, if you're constantly worried, and ex- and that's how we get hypertension and that's how we get diabetes and all these other chronic diseases because our body is out of whack and it stays in a stressed mode. That night, after my husband left, unbeknownst to me, they set my bed so that if I were to get out of my bed, a a piercing alarm would go off in the middle of the night that let the nursing staff know that I had fallen. I had gotten out of the bed. And I was a little bit embarrassed for me because... I thought that maybe I set off something or I, I woke up the, you know, the neighborhood, you know, all these six people. And, and then, you know, it dawned on me again, sitting there in the quietness of, a, of my bedroom, realizing that, you know what, that's, that bed was set for me. That bed was to protect me from myself, that had I gotten up and dizzy, I would have fallen and, and maybe, you know, broke my back or, you know, knocked my head or killed myself. When those nurses ran in thinking that I had fallen, it was actually a relief to to really realize that, wow, they had mechanisms put in place to make sure that I was being taken care of. And do you know that God puts in mechanisms not only in our body through the sympathetic nervous system, but he puts um, pastors and clergy people in our path to speak into our lives, to let us know that, hey, we're going the wrong direction. Hey, you're acting dizzy in life and, you know, you're 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 gonna fall and you need to get yourself up and 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 going the right direction well eventually you know about four hours later my dizziness went away and I had to really show the nursing staff that I was okay that I wasn't going to fall well you know what that's what we have to do that God gives us shepherds he gives us clergy people he gives us teachers he gives us spiritual directors to guide us coaches psychologists psychiatrists to coach us so that we don't live a proverbial dizzy life, that we can stand flat-footed and go about the business that God wants us to go. And eventually they took that little cold thing off of my, off, off of my bed. So you might ask, well, what does this have to do with the gospel? Well, everything, because we're tethered to God, and God is our life source. You know, in Acts 17, 28, it says, For in him we live and move and have our being. You know, we need to start each day understanding that we're tethered to God and that as we pray, he, he, he just releases the sustenance of life. We need to acknowledge God in everything that we do so that we understand that he's always tethered to us. We're always tethered to him. We are to abide in him and he is to abide in us. Secondly, in Psalms 119, 105, it tells us that God's word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Listen, 
He is the source of light and we are the lamp. And if we don't have him as a source, we don't have a light and we will stumble in the dark, just like I could have stumbled in the dark. And then John 15, 5 tells us that I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You know what? I couldn't do nothing. I could not do anything without that medicine inside of me. I was crippled over in misery. And many people are crippled over in misery because you have not connected yourself to the lifeline. You have not become a branch. You're still thinking you're the vine, but Jesus is our vine and we are the branches. And so as we allow ourselves to cultivate a vibrant prayer life and maintain a close relationship with God through continuous communication with him, we'll stay connected. He won't let us fall. He won't let us stumble. He won't let us stray. He won't let us disconnect. We have to want to be tethered to God. We have to want to be nurtured by God and his leaders to not climb out of our proverbial bed and and fall and slip and bang our head. God desires for us to have that kind of relationship with him. And if you haven't chosen Jesus, know that he's chosen you. Now it's up to you to accept Jesus' life source, his salvation. Allow him to rescue you. This is an appetizer for the soul. My name is Reverend Dr. Deborah Whitlock-Lax, and we'll see you soon.